<laughs> well, of course, the work I'm doing there, uh, I started in 1988. I found a team of Palestinians and a team of Israelis that I felt sh we shared the same perspectives. And I brought the, that both teams to Switzerland for so we could intensively work together and uh, develop a team that could work together. So we've been working together for about 12 years. No, we haven't solved the problem in the Middle East, the violence, but uh, we do have a thousand schools in Israel now functioning in harmony with our principles. So if we look 30 years into the future, I think our work, I would hope that it would make a big uh, contribution. Uh, in addition to that, I've worked with the police. Uh, we've uh, worked with uh, all the doctors in refugee camps in Palestine. So no, we haven't solved all of the, the, the violence there yet, but we're making contributions to the society. And just today, in fact, this lunch I had uh, with a woman who has access to uh, Shimon Perez, and he's got a copy of my book on his desk, and she has access to him, and now we're going to be talking about concretely what we can do now at the political level to get them to start thinking and communicating differently. So you never know. But don't, don't both sides have the same need? Don't they both want the same piece of land? I mean, how do you Notice resolve this? Specific... I define needs. They both have the same needs. There's no question about it. But the, the, the same piece of land is not a need. That's a strategy, you see. Uh, so that's why, uh, yes, if you think, how can that be solved? It can't be. But if you say, if you do what I do when I do mediation, I don't even talk about how to divide up the land until there's a connection, a connection mm -hmm. at the need level, to get both sides to see that they have the same need. Now, they'll start wanting now to justify why they have the right to the land. And I, right. in my mediations, I would say, but what are our needs? Let's look at the needs, you see. Uh, you know, that's been argued for how many centuries? We're not going to solve you know, who has the right on that basis. But if we can get both of you clear what your needs are, we can meet everybody's needs. Uh, but when you look at the, what we call these communications that they have, it's not a, I've been to one of those uh, organized by the Swedish government, that the, the Swedish service service got in an island, uh, they got some top people from Israel, Palestine, Iraq, Jordan, and they asked me to help in this. But they did it like most of these communications are done. Uh, you could see ahead of time, nobody's going to change anything. They're for the press, they're, they're not really human right. interactions. Uh, in fact, they're usually not even looking at each other when the other person's talking. They're off with their own people, what they're going to say back. They're not even right. listening. So it's not a kind of communication. Like the Norwegian guy that grabbed the, the Israeli and the Palestinian and brought them into his house for a weekend got further than with all the years of these kind of negotiations. So what I would do is get, and they're trying to see in Colombia right now, my colleague who's here from Colombia right now, the president knows of our work, the top senators in the peace thing, they would like us to be in a room with the leaders from all sides. Not with the usual kind of communication, but with my help to connect at the need level. To see each other as human beings, get rid of all this rhetoric. What, what, what would you do then? Take because there's a certain diplomatic protocol, um, and I know you've. You would escape it. I'm saying they can do that if they want, but if they really want my help, I would say let's just get into a room and let me do what I did with these uh, ch uh, chiefs in uh, Nigeria. See, one quarter of the population killed in one year. Uh, a Christian tribe and a Muslim tribe. I start with, I'd like to hear from either side who's, whose needs are not being met in this conflict. A Christian uh, chief screams across the table, you people are murderers. They scream back, you've been dominating us for 80 years, we're not going to tolerate it. You see, I ask for needs. They're giving me enemy images. Right. My job is to translate these judgments into needs. So I said to the chief who screamed murderer, chief, are you saying that your need for safety isn't met at the moment and you want some agreement that no matter what the conflict, no violence would be used? He thought for a minute, that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he wanted to say, but he didn't have need language. He could only call them names. Right. So I said, would a chief on this side please say back what his needs are? 
chief on the other side screams, then why did you kill my son? I said, chief, we'll get to that in a moment, but would you please just first tell me what his needs are? He couldn't. I had to repeat the needs. I had to repeat them three times. Finally, he hears it. Right. Then I translate his judgments into a need. I get this side to hear it. Just to get that far, it took about an hour because they kept screaming at each other. But after one hour of my just translating judgments into needs, one of the chiefs that hadn't spoken uh, jumped up and looked at me and said, because they spoke Hausa, a language I don't speak, so I had to <laughs> wait for my translator. I thought I had stepped on a cultural moray or something. But when I heard the message, I loved it. The translator said, the chief says we can't learn this in one day to communicate this way. If we know how to communicate this way, we don't have to kill each other, you see. So it took people in a totally different culture about an hour to see that if you can just say what your needs are, get rid of these enemy images, we can resolve the conflicts. So yes, in Israel and Palestine, the big problem would be, you see, it took my colleagues six months to get both chiefs into that room. And not both chiefs, there was about 12 yeah. on each side. Twelve, it, you know, he, six months he went back and forth to both sides using our training to empathize with the fears that kept them from wanting to get together. After six months, he got them into the room, and then it wasn't that hard to find a resolution, a peaceful resolution. Um, so in Israel and Palestine, there are some real serious issues. Uh, not so much Jerusalem, but water. Water is very scarce, and it doesn't get put out in the press much, but especially with, with Syria. That's one of the main issues with Syria, the water. Even that's quite resolvable if you could get it down to that level and out of all the rhetoric. Right. I guess oftentimes people are just attached to their strategies more than their needs. Rather than well, of course, and especially in our political life, uh, your strategy depends on uh, whether you're going to get the money to sustain yourself economically because the strategy uh, depends whether you get the lobby money and so forth and so on. Right. So yes, people get very addicted to the strategies and, forget, and lose connection with what needs are being met. 